Hi everybody. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the unit three thesis and outline planner. So the first thing that you should do is look at the unit three summary and response essay assignment details to get an idea of what you're writing this planner in service of. You can click here to download the planner itself. Um, it's also linked right here. And it is a document that is set up for you to fill out. Um, so I'm just gonna open up one that I've already worked on a little bit so I can go over a couple points with you. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna post this in the announcement to clarify. I don't, I kind of know why they call started calling it article one and article two um, because it gets confusing in the planner. But just so you know, article one is equivalent to reading three is school too shallow and article two is the article you found on your own on the database um, so i'll post like a little legend in the announcement to clarify that but just so you're on the right page with me um, when we're doing the unit three summary response essay you are responding to the first article not the two of them together you're going to be responding to the essay is school too shallow that's going to be the focus of our summary and the focus of our response just to clarify you will use the quotes from article two to help support points that you raise in the response portion of the essay you'll use quotes from article one from the article itself um, in the body of the essay as well. So just to clarify what those two different things mean, and I will post a key in the announcements. All right, so the introduction is the first paragraph. It's pretty standard. Your hook, um, how are you going to get people interested in this? Is there any background or context you need to include? And then your thesis statement. I'm going to recommend you do your thesis statement last, and I will show you why. Because your thesis statement needs to forecast what you're saying in your essay. This is a response paper. Anytime you are asked to write a response to a text, you are offering up all of the reactions that you had to that text. So your thesis statement is essentially going to be a list of all of those different or a summary of all of those different reactions that you had. So when we are talking about creating a thesis statement for this paper you're going to want to have something that sums up your personal and in this essay because it is a response you may use the first person i your personal sort of reaction ideologically to the article is school too shallow so what i'm looking for here is an ideological response meaning i want you to explain what ideas in the article you agreed or disagreed with after you finish your introduction, which should end with your thesis statement as per usual, you're going to write a summary. And it says list main points from your article one, which to reiterate is going to be a school too shallow. What I'm looking for as your very first sentence is an opener like this. In order to get yourself in the right place for writing a summary, and I'm going to link these in the announcement as well, I recommend that you read these two articles. In your learning materials folder for unit three, you have an article called writing summaries and summary writing tips. And I recommend that you read through both of these to get an idea of what you're doing. I've also linked the what is a summary response um, essay. That's important to read as well because it will give you an idea of what you're doing. Keeping in mind that what we are writing is an ideological response to the article is school too shallow. So after you read those things about summary, you know that what you're going to provide here is an opening sentence that includes rhetorical information and the major points of the essay. You can add a couple more. I wouldn't go more than six. Your article's not that long. I would stick to probably four, maybe five points because you're just going over um, the major points of the article. And as you're writing these, it's not a bad idea to think about attributive tags like the article states or Kataru points out. Think about starting these because then you can just create your summary straight from these points. These points are going to be the major points in the article that you think are important. To create your opening sentence, which is arguably the most important sentence when you're writing a summary, you're going to want to make sure you include rhetorical information like the year that the article was published. If you want, you can include the publication. The article title needs to be in there and the author needs to be in there. Notice that that can be a lot of work gathering that information, but that doesn't make this a complete sentence. 
Many, many times I will see students starting with something like this. In the 2017 Christian Science Monitor article, Is School Too Shallow, author Stacey Tyker Cotteru does what? That's not a sentence. That's just a jumble of facts. You have to make it a complete sentence. And the way that you do that is by then including a brief explanation of the topic. Your opening summary sentence should be rhetorical information, who wrote it, when, in what publication, what's the name of it, followed by a quick explanation of the topic the article is covering. So you can follow this construction as a model. You can, you can, you know, switch it up as well. There's lots of different ways to present this same information. There are different ways of saying the same sentence, but to start with, you want a sentence that looks something like this. Okay, now we're getting into the body of the paper. When you are going through and creating the body of the paper, you are going to see at first that it says that the number of main points depends on how long each body paragraph is. So you can see that I actually, I left this in, but if you scroll down to the fourth main point, it says as needed. So if you think your paper is gonna be long enough without this, you're more than welcome to just get rid of it. This is a structural, um, like a structural document format that's meant to help you but you can add things and remove things as needed. If you have four explanations for this paragraph and only two for this paragraph, it's fine. You'll see that underneath each of these, it says outside source support from article two. That may not be something you can incorporate into every paragraph and that's fine. You shouldn't try and shoehorn your database article in there if it doesn't make sense in a particular paragraph. I would like everyone to incorporate at least one quote at one point from that database article into your paper. That's the basic assignment requirement. But you're not really doing a comparison between these two articles. You're doing a summary response and responding to the text that is, is school too shallow? And you're using your outside source to back up your points. So I filled out this first main point as a way of kind of showing you that. And I think that I'm going to recommend that everyone start with a paragraph that looks like this. For your first main point, I want you to explain whether or not overall you agree with what Kataru has to say. I agree with the author's main point that, and you can go back to your comprehension check and see what you said the main point was and see if you need to edit it a little bit based on feedback. But you can essentially say, like, if you think that the main point is that critical thinking should be taught more in schools, then you would say that. I agree with the author's main point that critical thinking needs to play bigger role in education in the United States. However you want to say that, put it in your own words. If that is you, what you agree, or if you disagree, state that at the beginning. I disagree with the author's main point. Then what you're going to put down here, uh, there's a question, are you responding to these details positively or negatively? Well, I'm agreeing, so that's positively. So I'm going to put that right there. When I'm going over examples or details, I'm coming up with reasons, and you can see my, I, is totally appropriate. Um, I'm going to say that I agree with the author's main point because I saw it firsthand with my kids. I remember just memorizing from my own days in school instead of problem solving. These are things that many of you have already explained on the comprehension check as to why you agree or disagree. So include those. And let's say maybe that's all you have to say. You're like, those are the two main reasons. Okay, fine. Then you'll have your two main reasons. And then here, I am going to include my outside source because my fake source that I made up, let's say by Benson, that I found on the database as an EBSCO host, says that there isn't enough focus on critical thinking in schools. So my other article agrees with my first article, so I'm going to offer that as a piece of support. There you go. First main point. Then for my second main point, I'm going to disagree with something particular in the article. 
I'm going to try and find something in the article, specific things in the article that I can focus in on. So this is about, did I agree with it overall? And now I'm getting kind of nitpicky and I'm saying, I also agreed. I thought it was really true when the art, when the author said, da, 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 da. In this case, I'm giving you an example of if I disagreed. However, I did not agree with the author's view that the lack of critical thinking instruction is uh, teacher's fault. Um, I'm not saying that the article actually says that. I don't think the article ever really does imply that, but I'm just, you know, let's say that it did. I do not agree with the author's view that the lack of critical thinking instruction is teacher's fault. And then maybe here I would talk about administration and maybe I would talk about, you know, like um, the state of the... Um, that I think that like it has to do with like the federal government not doing enough to support teachers, whatever, um, that it needs to come from a federal level. It needs to come from people um, on the school board, whatever I think I'm going to put it in here. And I'm going to say, you know what, I don't really have anything that my outside source doesn't apply here. So I'm going to cut that off. Um, so maybe I would talk about local administration and then maybe I would talk about school administration and then local administration like the town school board and the federal government and those are the things I want to say in that point then that would be my second main point point. and then here I would go on and I might say I it really spoke to me when the author said and maybe I'm gonna include a quote this is a fake quote so don't do this but um, And I'm making uh, the wrong year on purpose, I know, because I don't want anybody to quote me because this is fake. I made it up off the top of my head. But I'm just trying to show you um, that here what I did was I picked out a specific quote. And I'm maybe going to explain like how this relates to my life philosophy and how I really believe in critical thinking. And it's a positive. So I got it positively. Positively. Uh, and I'm going to include details and I'll figure out whether or not I can get an outside source in. And so then I'm creating these points as I go. And what I'm going to do at the very end is the last thing is I'm going to put them all together in my thesis statement. And I'm going to probably say something like, overall, I agreed with the author's main point and I liked how much the article respects critical thinking, but I disagreed that the teachers need to are responsible for everything. And you can see that what I've actually done here is I have laid out the points that I included and I'm actually, because I'm a good critical thinker and organizer, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to whoop, think about the way to organize these. Whoop, because I, I mentioned them, I'm going to organize them based on positive, positive, negative. I don't really want my paper to go to be ping ponging around where I'm like, well, I liked it, but I didn't like this, but I did like that, but I didn't like this. I'm going to try and group them together. Um, and then that is reflected in my thesis statement. I agreed with the author's main point. Boom. I agreed with the author's, I agree with the author's main point. Next thing. I liked how much the article respects critical thinking. It really spoke to me when the author said critical thinking benefits students for life. But I didn't agree with teachers being responsible for everything. And there you, you have it. So you can see that this is what I would like you to do. Think of moments that you uh, first, in your first paragraph, explain whether you agreed with the author overall. And then for your other paragraphs, explain moments where you agreed or disagreed, and you'll really focus in on responding to why or why not.